So today I really want to play with my watercolor set. Ooh la la. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't have all the colors. I like to keep them like that so it looks like I have a complete set. What happened to this guy? Okay, so I haven't used this in a while. And I thought you guys would like to come along with me as I uh, create a little something that didn't exist before. <laughs> so yeah, let's do it. So I've got two sheets of Canson XL watercolor paper. Now what I thought it would be fun to draw is a face in profile because I used to draw faces in profile all the time. Like it was kind of my go-to doodle, you know, like on napkins and restaurants and stuff. But I was trying to do it and it wasn't coming as easy as I remember it always doing. So I feel like it's time to stretch that art muscle. <laughs> I was watching, I think it was Babs Tar on her new show on Critical Role, where she's teaching everyone to draw. She kept saying like drawing is a muscle that you need to train and practice. And if you, you know, get lazy and you're not stretching it all the time, then it's gonna get it's gonna get weaker and it won't be able to draw the same way. So you have to practice and sketch and really make it a habit. So that's what I want to do today. In my sketchbook, I also came up with a pretty cool hairstyle. So I think we'll be able to make this pretty fun and interesting. But I think I want to make the head a lot bigger than this. Yeah, let's go bigger. That's too big, actually. Let's try and just see if we have room for everything. Use really simple shapes to make sure everything fits on the page. Kind of looks like a mushroom. <laughs> the neck would be like there. The side of the face would be there with like a jawline. So now I'm taking those rough shapes, making them look a lot closer to the detailed shape without going too close, you know? I think one of the easiest mistakes to make when you're starting a drawing is to go too detailed too fast or too soon rather. But if you tackle it in stages slower and with like simple upgrades, you can really pinpoint a mistake as you're making it and then you can kind of fix it before you get a little too far down through the process. <laughs> and if you ever feel like fixing anything, it doesn't feel like you're erasing the whole drawing either, <laughs> which is good for you mentally, you know? Let's figure out where some of these uh, body parts are. That is some big hair. <laughs> oh my God. I'm gonna just quickly sketch out the hairline before I start putting too much detail into the hair. I really like this pointy nose. I feel like I always draw like little squishy button noses. So it's kind of fun to do something different. All right, I'm pretty happy with this face. If you remember what it looked like before, maybe I can put a side-by-side -side comparison. <laughs> you don't need it to look pretty at the beginning, you know? Slowly work on it and it's a lot easier to get it to look good if you just take your time. <laughs> I'm really enjoying the thin lines and the pointiness of this face. So I really want to take that and expand upon it with the hair. So if you look at it right now, there's a lot of like softer, squishier lines like this one right here. And I really wanna take um, that sharpness and apply it up through the hair. So like here, I've got this super round and soft curve, but if I just make it a little bit more angular. You see how different that looks now? Not all of them have to be perfectly, you know, angular. So if I don't like it, I can always change it. You see how that's suiting the rest of the drawing a little bit more? I'm gonna pinpoint a couple strands. So now I've got all of the larger elements laid out on the page that I wanted to include in the drawing, but now it's time to go in and add the accessories, like the parts that are gonna make it a little bit more unique. And I'm mixing a bunch of different ideas I saw on Pinterest because I kind of was just looking through hairstyles um, the other day. <laughs> and so I've kind of got some of those running around in my head. One was like this really cool like cut in the hair. It was actually even more extreme than that. And they also like trimmed the hair like that. So it had this really cool shape to it. And I think that also suits our triangularness that I was aiming for. <laughs> okay, the other thing I wanted to add was like sort of like a flower crown that goes along the edge here as the mohawk extends from the scalp. So I'm just gonna go in and doodle some flowers, get a rough idea of where I want them. And then maybe I'll look up some references of flowers so that we can make them look like, you know, legit flowers. <laughs> When it comes to references, I really like to kind of sketch the idea out on the paper and then look for references that'll help me further my idea instead of using straight references and just sort of copying from them. But if you need references to help you getting started, there's nothing wrong with that either. <laughs> this is just my personal preference. Can't decide if I want this buzzed and this long or this to be kind of like a faux hawk in the way that it's just hair being pulled into the mohawk shape. So there'd be like, Things like that. Can't decide. Maybe a little flower being jammed in the side of her head. 
probably zoom in so you can see what's going on. There we go. I wonder if there's like a book called like The Anatomy of a Flower and it like covers a bunch of different species of flowers. So I can be like, hey, I'm drawing a so-and-so instead of just, look at this blob, it's a flower. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of flower? Who knows? Which one does it resemble? Maybe. Everyone knows baby's breath though, right? The little poofy white things that you use to fill in any drawing with flowers. Everybody knows those ones. Maybe I'll Google a rose. Let's see if we can stick a rose in here. Ooh, that's so pretty. Probably right here. You kind of got like the center of the rose. And then you just have these petals that come off from it like this-ish. And some of it's like shaded. There we go, I tried. Kind of looks like chewed up gum. <laughs> but then again, what's really the difference between a rose and chewed up gum? Instead, more of my fake flowers. Cause I can draw those. Looks like fingers. We'll go with the faux hawk, the ponytail mohawk thing. <laughs> I mean, she still shaved her head there, so it's still kind of edgy. <laughs> All right, so this is what we're working with so far. I definitely want to give her some clothes. What if we do like an off the shoulder v-neck sort of thing? Something like that. I feel like some jewelry is called for here. We got some graphite uh, everywhere. I just made it worse. <laughs> I'm really a fan of this neck. I feel like it looks like a real neck, you know, with like a cartoon filter on it, but still. <laughs> Now I was trying to decide if I wanted to line this with like a pen before adding in the watercolor, but I feel like it'd be kind of fun to just do a wash. Oh geez. But I think it'd be fun to just try and do a wash over pencil. I feel like I've done that before and it didn't turn out too bad. <laughs> We're artists. We're not trying to put a man on the moon. I mean, I can have fun with this. If it turns out like a disaster, it's fine. Here, I'll turn off the camera, take a picture of this so I have it, and then we'll destroy it. It'll be so much fun. Grandma, watercolors. I have a couple like scraps of watercolor paper that I use for swatch cards. There we go. Woo, I'm excited for this. Okay. But, oh, I need paper towel and a cup of water and brushes. My dog was uh, playing with the paper towel roll, so. We don't have perfect square edges here. For some reason I was seeing bright pink for the hair, but I don't know if I even have a bright pink color. We'll have to test some things out here. See if we can get a pink. No, that's pretty orange. That's a cute peachy color. Use that for hair. I kind of thinking I want the hair lighter than the skin. That way we can use some darker, more saturated colors for the floral bits. Let's give it a shot. Very light coral color. Not having too much graphite smudging. So that's good. All right, and then we just have to do the hair here. All right, while it's still wet, I think I'm gonna go a little darker. Add a little texture in here. Add some contrast in the same color. Blend that out a bit. Now I'm seeing sort of like browns and teal. So let's go back to my little swatch card here and try and find some colors that'll complement this one. Probably should have done that before I applied that there, but I love that color so much, I don't really care. <laughs> let's try and mix some greens and blues to make a teal color here. Ooh, should have taped this down. It's not too late, I can tape it down. Do I have tape? Okay, nope, I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just right here. With my luck, it probably is on my desk somewhere and I'm just not seeing it. I like these swatches, they look so good together. We just start coloring with it. Now everything's looking pretty pastel still. I might have to do multiple layers of different things. And since I spent so much time looking for tape, the pink layer's dry, so I don't even have to worry. <laughs> I think my favorite part about using the pencil is you see all those sketch lines underneath of the color. Really digging it. I'm actually gonna just mix in some straight coral. Try and brighten up that color. I think there's some <laughs> eraser shavings getting stuck. Didn't foresee that problem. While that's drying, I kind of want to go in and add another layer of color to the hair. See how I like that. Mm, actually, I'm not a huge fan. Might try to blend that out. That's better. 
Alright, that's fun. That adds a little extra, you know, something, something. I can use this turquoise color we made. Since we don't want to add too many colors to it or we'll distract from the color scheme, I'm going to use that same turquoise color instead of making a green and using it to color in all the leaves. Like so! I might actually use this color for lips. What we can do, if this is dry, sweet, we can color the shirt. I guess we kind of have to use the turquoise color, but I might try to go a little bit more pastel because I might darken up the skin. We'll see. Okay, I need the bigger paintbrush for this. <laughs> this feels silly. Add some splotches of color here. Do I like that? I don't think so. Let's blend that out. <laughs> Darken up the hair a little smidge. Now I'm going to use a little bit of the pink and darken up some of the skin. You know, now that it's dry, I can do that without messing up the layer underneath too much. If you fiddle with it too much, you still can ruin the layer underneath, so you gotta be careful. Again, I'm kind of following that same technique from when you're sketching it out that I'm doing like bigger blobs. Like I added the flat layer of the watercolor with some slight shading, kind of like lightened up near the cheek. And now I'm going in after it's dry, kind of pinpointing where there might be shadows. And then I can do, I can keep doing this, you know, for a while and continue um, improving upon it until I get bored, you know? <laughs> Darken up this area a little over here, maybe. And I've kind of got a problem where her face is lighter than the rest of her skin. But I really like the way this face is shaded, so I'm scared to, you know, like, darken that up. And lose all the shading that I have in here. Or if I can, like, here. I'm gonna use the coral and add some of that brown. If that makes a new color. It's fun. It's kind of earthy. A little muddy, but, hmm. <laughs> Let's add some more reddish pink in here. Maybe even add some of that to the hair down here. Bring that color into the piece. Since it seems a little bit crazy right now. And out of the color scheme. Kind of blend it out. Incorporate it anywhere we can. There we go. We might even, this might be gross because these are kind of complementary colors. Add a little down here in the shirt. Now just trying to find places to incorporate that color. Ooh, that looks kind of cool, actually. <laughs> Never done that before. I wonder if we could even take some of that green color and add it to the tip of the top of the hair. Because we don't really have any green up here. I wonder what that'll look like. Might ruin it, but again, I'm not putting a man on the moon. What do I think of that? I think that's fun. It's kind of what I would do if it was digital art, you know? Just kind of incorporate some of the colors in other places. It kind of just ties the drawing together a little bit. And since it's watercolor, we have the ability to add all these layers and mix the colors while it's on the paper. Now, even though the hair is predominantly that coral color, we still have the hints of the carmine and that turquoise color we made. And it just sort of like gradients out. And I really like that about it. The thing I'm not really crazy about in this picture is the floral thing. I feel like it doesn't stand out enough. But I'm not sure how to fix that once we've come this far. Hmm. I might actually try to darken up the face a bit. Start by just putting it in all the places where there's shadows. And then trying to blend. Blend. I mean, we can have places with highlights, that's fine. I just feel like it doesn't fit with the rest of her. Like with her neck and her shoulder here. Definitely don't think it ruined it, so <laughs> I'll take it. Even maybe use watercolor to add some details too. But before I can do anything else, I'm pretty sure I need to wait for this to dry, so. Now that I've taken a step back and I'm looking at it again, <laughs> I've noticed there's definitely not a whole lot of contrast in this drawing, so that's something I want to pay attention to in the future. But now that it is all dry, I do want to go in with some liners and darken up some of the lines that I really want to stand out, like maybe the eyelashes. That pen's dying on me. I guess not that one. <laughs> Anything else? Now this one is not waterproof, so I can't put water on it um, afterwards. Darken up some of these lines. We go. Is that actually making it look any different? It's kind of hard to tell. <laughs> there we go. I don't know if that's really making a very big difference. Let me try with the flowers because those are really what looks kind of mushy. Oh, what I can do though, where's my pasta pen? We can lighten up some of that baby's breath. Ooh, that looks kind of cool actually. I like that. My favorite part's always adding the 
highlights at the end. I actually have a pink Posca pen. I wonder if I could use that for anything. Ooh, I love that. That actually looks really cool. Okay, let me look. Let's see if I can find a... Oh, look, first try. I got some like... Ooh, that's still dumping. Okay. <laughs> got some like highlights to this rose. Like that. I don't want to draw over too many of the pencil lines because I do like that texture even though it's kind of muddy. But <laughs> just a couple of them maybe. I'll go back to the white Posca pen. Add a couple highlights here and there. Maybe it's a sun. <laughs> maybe we can add a little bit of a highlight to the hair. A blob and then pull out from it. Like you can smudge a couple of the areas so it's not as opaque in those locations. Yeah, look at that. Looks kind of cool. I usually when I paint over pencil, paint over a color ice pencil, and that's a little less muddy than using graphite, just regular graphite. So I do like the look of this with the watercolor because I already knew I did. Although I usually use the color pink or rose which really complements some of the watercolors. Really nice. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of fun with this. What did you guys draw today? I want to thank you for drawing along with me. I know a lot of you do that or just watching. It's really nice to have you here. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you all have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.